We're actually the wrong way. Okay. How do I flip the camera around on this one? <laughs> all right. Let me. Is that all right? There we are. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us today. And I think a topic that we're going to talk about today is something that you and I handle a lot, which is what type of business should I get for my E2? And I get that question all the time. And I have to say, just call Mike. I don't, I do immigration. I don't do business. So that's why you're here. So let's talk <laughs> a little bit about that. I know you do, you obviously are a business broker and you help just U.S. citizens buy businesses as well. But one of the things that you do is you help a lot of E2 investors find businesses that might be suitable for the E2. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's just like anything else. It's an interview process, figure out what people like and uh, go find it for them. Pretty simple. Yeah, I, I, you're right. I think there are some kind of overview is simple, but it gets a little bit more complex as we dig into the different types of businesses. But as I always tell clients, almost anything will work for the E2 as long as it fits the requirements. There's not one type of business that works better than others. It just needs to fit the requirements. So with that in mind, let's take a step back and I'd love to hear a little bit more about your process. If someone came to you and said, hey, I'm looking to get an E2, but I don't even know where to start with the business. What types of things, where would you start with them? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the number one thing, unfortunately, typically is money. And that's where I like to start with to see where they're comfortable with the budget. And then um, we start to dig into the personality. So, you know, one of my first questions I ask is, you know, is the business that they're looking for, is it passion or is it money? And uh, we start to suss out their skill sets. Uh, you know, hopefully that uh, it's transferable from what they've done and what uh, where they're coming from to over here. And, you know, as you know, sometimes it's not. You know, we'll get, to, for instance, Germans, as an example, uh, uh, have no idea about lawn care. They, you know, it's just, it's not something that happens over there. Um, or, you know, sometimes people don't want physical labor. You, you know, it, it's, it, it's just, um, it's asking a lot of questions and getting to know somebody. Right. It's, so a lot of it's about kind of personal preference, skill set, interests and location, right? I mean, I think if you're going to be moving to kind of the northern Minnesota, maybe lawn care is not great. It's like three months a year. If you're moving to Florida or Arizona or California, that could be a great business. So a lot of it would be about location as well, I presume. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Where they want to go. So this is something that I tell clients too, although you have a lot more information than I do, is pick something you like. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Pick something you're interested in. But you're right. Uh, one thing you said at the very beginning that's always kind of a concern is the money. So obviously businesses are kind of like wedding dresses. You can spend as much as you want. But what are the typical ranges that you see that people are able to actually buy a business. So I'm sure people come to you with $15,000. That's not going to work for the E2 and it's not going to buy any business that anybody would want anyway. What are like, what's kind of a range of things that you typically see that, that people so, can get into a yeah. business that can be successful? Okay. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I, 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 I've seen businesses as low as 40, $50,000 work for the right person. But, you know, there's always a caveat that they have to build it, that they have to gain employees, you know, the typical visa stuff. So that's on the low end, and that's, that's, pre that's pretty rare that we find something that works for somebody. And, again, a lot of times that seems to have been on the L1 visa. Um, most of the time, I would say the business sales for the E2 visas are, you know, 80,000-ish up to two, maybe 300,000. Um, it, it's pretty rare. Uh, selling a business over a half million for for an E2, but we, we we have done it, but it's it's not typical. So would you say somewhere one hundred to two hundred thousand would be the most typical range? That's the sweet spot, absolutely. Yeah, I would say that's true, kind of for my clients as well. Whether they buy a business or start one, it's usually between one hundred and two hundred thousand. So I guess I guess if you really average it out, about a hundred and fifty thousand or so. Um, would be a very doable, as far as I'm concerned, doable E2, but then also as far as you're concerned, it sounds like uh, possibly uh, on the business side that could work as well. Like you could actually get a business that has 
you know, a legitimate client base and could grow from there or something for 150 ballpark. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, again, looking at, uh, you know, some of those simple lawn businesses, I mean, 150000 might get you 70000 80000 income, get you your two or three employees, and that's perfect. Right. Yes, absolutely. Right. So interesting. And it's interesting to hear kind of um, everybody's, I'm sure, kind of different skill sets and interests and things like that. What are some of the types of businesses that you have seen um, work for people? I'm sure there's kind of the basics, right? Like coffee shop, that kind of thing. What are some of the other more kind of interesting businesses maybe that you've seen? Well, you know, yeah, I, I, I like the specialty businesses. So, you know, um, just uh, a niche business, for instance, there's a business uh, available that uh, handles teak, high-end teak uh, custom work for uh, boat manufacturers, uh, for uh, boaters. Right. Uh, teak goes out all the time here in Florida. You know, the sun kills everything. And uh, there's a significant amount of money. So just, you know, a, a, a niche like that is just, it, it, it's perfect. It's wonderful. Great. That's fantastic. I, uh, I'm apologizing up front. Today is a non-school day. So I have kids at my door and my kid is running around. It's, it's Veterans Day. So everybody's at home. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, you know, it's interesting as well. I've had those types of businesses too. Um, sometimes businesses I've never really heard of or didn't really know existed, but they can work. And if you have a specialized skill set you know, from your home country or whatever, some of those can be really great. So don't sleep on something just because it's not what you think of as typical. It doesn't have to be. And in fact, sometimes I recommend against a bit a, a restaurant, right? Everyone kind of comes to me, oh, I'll just buy a restaurant that focuses on, you know, fill in the blank country food. Like you can do that and that could work. But there are so many other options out there, and some of them are a lot faster and cheaper, frankly, than restaurants. Restaurants can be a real pain in the behind. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we've had people come, you know, for instance, with significant leather skills. Uh, I, I remember selling a business. Uh, the, the person made purses, coats, you know, had a fantastic skill set. A little bit difficult to place that business for a visa, but, you know, ended up finding them a business. But, yeah, absolutely is uh, do what you know, and let's see uh, how we can transfer it over to a business here. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. And I've just I've had a lot of different businesses, people starting businesses or buying businesses, what have you, that are yeah not your typical business. And for an from an immigration perspective, it doesn't have to be a typical business. It just has to right. meet the requirements, which normally I tell people are, you have customers and you have employees. If you've got that do what you like, do what you enjoy. That's, those yep. are the important things, right? So I've, we talked about price. That's a big one. It sounds like plan on a hundred to 200. I tell my clients the exact same, uh, skill set and interests. That's another one. Anything else that you tell people to kind of take into account when they're trying to find a business to buy? Well, yeah, that, that's always, uh, you know, part of the getting to know them, uh, you know, so some people have, you know, children, so they ask about schools in certain areas, uh, you know, that that's usually a pretty major one. And then uh, I, I find a lot of times people have misconceptions about areas, you know, they think it's a bad area or, you know, as an example, you know, Tampa is a huge place. It does have some good places. It has, a, you know, it has a few bad places, but to exclude a significant area such as that, you know, it's it just, but, you know, it goes back to everything is uh, about really getting to know somebody. So it's not, um, I, I would say one of the most important factors in what we do is that aspect of it. You know, some people jump from broker to broker, only want to uh, talk to the listing agent. Um, again, <laughs> you know, after we sit down and we talk and we get to know somebody for a couple of months, usually we can sit down and say, this business is not right for you because, and we can point out a couple of factors and help them think a little bit outside the box. And vice versa, right? Hey, this came across my desk. It sounds like exactly like something you're looking for, would be interested in, could be good at as well, right? Yep, absolutely. Right. I think that's really important too. And I think that you, you hit the nail on the head too with location. 
Um, you know, sometimes people, a lot of people who contact me do have interest in a certain, you know, a state at least. Sometimes people contact me and they're not really sure. And they go, where should I live in the United States? And I'm like, oh boy. I mean, it's everything from Vermont to Hawaii and everything in between. So what do you like? What kind of weather do you like? What kind of environment do you like? You like living in a smaller town. You like living in a bigger, bigger city. And sometimes if they're looking for like a, oh, I want to do like a teak business, like, well, you need to live by the ocean. I mean, don't start that in Nebraska. That's going to be a, yeah. that's going to be a problem, right? So I guess uh, something that you and I both say is a lot of this is up to personal choice. What do you want to do? What do you like? How much money do you have? Where do you want to live? It, it, because businesses and the E2 will fit almost anything, right? Yep, absolutely. It's, yeah, more money you spend, the easier it is. Like you said, if you have clients, uh, a space, whatever, yeah, you, yes. you, you, got, you got your E2. Yes. So let me ask you this. This is another question everybody asks me is, how long does a process like this finding a business take? Well, uh you know, people have to roll with the punches as well. You know, we're, we're unfortunately in a market right now, or at, at least where we are, uh, we don't have a lot of small businesses on the market and there's not a whole lot coming up. So people have to be able to be flexible. So, you know, there, there, there's some, sometimes people come to us and I, I do everything I can not to help them buy that business because it's a bad business. And then, you know, some people just don't care. And, um, you know, it, 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 it goes both ways. So you think, I mean, there's always that thing, right? There's, I, I don't want to call it beginner's luck, but there's always that thing where somebody calls you and is like, mm, I'm thinking about this. And you just happen to have something that's almost exactly that at this minute, right? And in a mm -hmm. case like that would take probably a couple of weeks to finish. But then I'm sure you also have the other extreme where people call you and maybe it takes a year or longer. What's like the average time? And I know we're in a super weird time right now. So kind of taking yeah. this for every industry, I swear, for every person I talk to is just like, oh my God, it's crazy right now. But let's just kind of take this kind of weird anomaly time out. What, what would be an average for someone from the day they call you till the day they're signing a business? How long does something like that take? It's usually over a year. Oh, really? You know, I, I, yeah, yeah, for, for, for me. I mean, obviously, we get those calls where people find the business and they find the business in the first, second, or third try. They're ready to move. Most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time, they contact us, ask some questions. Uh, we don't hear from them for six months. They do some research. They've been looking at listings. They come back. Um, you know, it's it just, it really depends on the buyer, you know, and, and like, like I was alluding to, you know, there's also those discerning buyers that have to have everything perfect for a hundred, 200,000. They skew the averages. You know, we've seen people go three, four, five years before finding a business as well. So again, so much is, is personality type. You know, if you can, if you can, you know, you're buying a business, if you can roll with the punches and you know, realize that everything's not going to be perfect, especially in this price range, you know, that right. that's, that's the mindset you have to be in. And uh, you can find, you know, you can find a business in two, three months. Right. I mean, I think when you're saying a year or two, it sounds like that's from if someone called you today, and then kind of disappears for a little bit doing their own research, then comes back. But someone who's serious that talks to you today, like, this is what I'm doing, period. It sounds like maybe, three to six months would be an average time to find something, you know, without having every single item exactly a fantasy land, right? Um, yeah, I, 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 I would say that's correct, just for the fact that, you know, people don't want to come over here, you know, it's just like buying a car or anything else. You don't buy the first car you look at or the first home, whatever the case is. You, you want to go take a look, ask some questions, get a feeling for, you know, the surroundings, the, right. you know, the business, and then, and then make a decision there. And I find a lot of times too, you know, people, you know, one of their first two, three, four businesses that they've looked at has always stuck in their mind. And then, uh, you know, we may look at five, 10, 20, 30 businesses and they end up circling back to, yeah. you know, one of the first ones they've seen just for confirmation. Right. Which makes sense. So it sounds like the, the, um, the takeaways might be just be flexible, but also yep. be honest with yourself about what you want to do, where you want to live and how much money you're willing to spend and what you want out of this business. 
right? Yep. Perfect. I always tell people the exact same thing. And then I say, call Mike. I don't do business. I do immigration. So with that said, Mike, how could somebody, if they're interested in getting more information about buying a business, how could somebody contact you? Yeah. So our website's a great place to start. You know, it'll ha have all of our contact information, infinitybusinessbrokers.com. Uh, we have an aggregate uh, system that we have uh, thousands of business listings throughout the state of Florida. And uh, we have articles about uh, immigration, buyer's articles, seller's articles, uh, you name it. Uh, some people, you know, read half the website. Some people email, some people call. So uh, the, the information is there. I'm here. So, yep. Fantastic. Thanks, Mike. And obviously, anybody that's interested in an E2 visa, reach out to us, rupertlawgroup.com. You can email me, a rupert at rupertlawgroup.com, or send us a WhatsApp, 323-434-4385. Thanks, Mike. It was great having you. Yeah, pleasure. Uh, th thank you so much, and good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you, too. Talk soon. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye.